Church has said, Praise the Lord. The Lord continue to bless us in our training in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our training tonight. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the workers in every section. We're asking, Lord, that you open our eyes, the eyes of our minds, to behold and to experience wondrous, wonderful things in your word in Jesus' name. We pray that the goodness of the word will not pass us by. The grace you have provided will be for everyone. Enrich our lives, Lord, and help us to reach out to people around us, sinners and saints, so they'll become better in the way of the kingdom in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 14 to verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil, the same covering, on taking away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, when the books of Moses are read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. The Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, is speaking about the children of Israel, and by extension, speaking to all men, all women who have not known Christ. The Lord here is speaking to religious people. Religious but not righteous. They have an idea. They have an understanding. There is God. How to connect with that God, they don't know. How to have the light, the truth, the gospel, the salvation that shows them the way to live as children of God ought to live that they don't know. And it is not that they are not reading what could be read about God, about heaven, about the way of righteousness. But as they read, the words are simple. The words are straightforward. But their minds are blinded. Even though they might see in the physical, it says in verse 14, their minds were blinded. And it says, until this day. So this is not peculiar to those who lived before Calvary, before the cross. After the cross, after Pentecost, after the apostles had gone out preaching the word of God and revealing the mind of God to the children of Israel, until this day that Paul the Apostle was writing, the veil, the covering in their mind is still not taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So it's not the problem of reading. They read or they read. And many people still read today, but they cannot understand. It says, which veil is done away in Christ, only in Christ. Seminary does not take the veil away. Education does not take the veil away. Civilization does not take the veil away. Religiosity does not take the veil away. When somebody comes to Christ and he turns to the Lord, who is the light of the world, salvation comes. And when that salvation comes, the mind is renewed. The heart is transformed. And by that, the person begins to see. He opens the word of God, Old Testament or New Testament, and the light comes on the word, and the veil is taken away. Verse 15. 
but even unto this day, even unto this day, when Moses is rich, the veil is upon their heart. He had mentioned the mind in verse 14. Now verse 15, he mentions the heart. That when the Old Testament is read, that's what he means there by Moses. Reading Genesis or Exodus or Leviticus or Numbers or Deuteronomy or the rest of the Old Testament, the veil is still there. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. It talks about the children of Israel and it talks about everyone today. Every religious man, every religious woman, and the people that take the light of pride in their denomination. I belong to such and such church. I belong to such and such denomination. And you will see, as you discuss with them and as you listen to them, they are blinded by religion. They are blinded by tradition. They are blinded by superstition. We'll come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Acts, chapter 13. We're reading from verse 27. Acts 13, verse 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. It says those leaders, religious leaders, they read the word of God every Sabbath day, and that means they read it every week in their synagogue, in their sanctuary, in their temple, in their church building. And the people themselves, together with their leaders, they read all that the prophets have said about Christ, about the Savior, about the Messiah, about the plan of God for the redemption of the world, yet they remain blind blind to the truth, the truth of salvation. And you can read through everything and never see the way to become righteous or become holy in the word of God. Look at verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Moses had written that a prophet will come like unto me. He will speak the word of God unto you. Him shall ye hear. He is the final message and the final word. And he is the one that will bring salvation that will bring forgiveness, they read that, they need to understand. And Jesus came to them directly and said, I am he, and the one that your prophet spoke about, they need to understand. And the apostles came and they said, this is he. There is no salvation in any other, and there is no name given among men by which we can be saved except the name of this Jesus. And he didn't understand, and Paul who had been part of them. And he had been in the, among the people that carried letters of authority to persecute Christians. His eyes were opened, and his mind was enlightened. And he said, this is the way, this Jesus, or this Christ, that I preach unto you, it is easy, or the only Savior. And yet, he didn't understand. Look at that verse 39 again. And by him all who believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Verse 40. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold ye despise us and wonder and perish. Behold, ye despisers, from what you hear, you wonder. 
and yet because you will not believe you perish by walking walk in your days a walk which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you why wouldn't they believe they said i can't see I'm, i can't see what you are saying I can't comprehend what you are saying. And the apostle said, Beware, lest that come upon you that God walks a walk in your days, which ye shall not believe, even though a man declare it unto you. Look at verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And they spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Paul the Apostle explained everything to them. He revealed everything to them. He was passionate about their salvation. He was passionate that God will open their eyes and they will see the truth instead of their eyes being opened. They were contradicting and they spoke blasphemy. Verse 46, but Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you. But seeing, ye, seeing that ye put it far away from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. That's what their blindness produced. They judged themselves. They accounted themselves. They counted themselves among the people that are unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. I pray the word of God will not pass you by. The light of the gospel will not pass you by. It should not be taken away and given to other people to replace you in Jesus' name. Tonight we're looking at the message, Supernatural Recovery from Spiritual Blindness. Supernatural Recovery from Spiritual Blindness. Point, three points we're looking at. Number one, the description and degrees of retarding blindness. The word retard is something to draw somebody back, to slow somebody down. He wants to move forward, but because he's blind, he has to be cautious, and therefore he's walking slower than he's capable. He's retarded. The description and the degrees of retarding blindness. Number two, the danger and the damnation for religious blindness. The most terrible blindness somebody can have is religious blindness. If you are ignorant about material things, about commerce, about science, about earthly knowledge, about things around you that are not eternal it's bad but you can still see through but when you become blind spiritually religiously and you take good for bad good for evil and you take uh, light for darkness then it's terrible because there's nothing to save such a man, such a woman. The danger and the damnation for religious blindness. Point number three, our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. Reversible blindness. Somebody has been blind. But you understand that God who created us, not only our body, our mind, our soul, our heart, it can reverse that condition of blindness, reversible blindness. But it needs your decision, our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. Let's come to number one. Number one, the description and degrees of retarding blindness. Uh, let, let's go back to Genesis, the first book of the Bible, and see how the blindness of the mind, 
the blindness of the heart and the blindness of the inner man walks upon the total man. In Genesis chapter 19, reading from verse 11, and it smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. What had happened here is God sent two angels to Sodom. And those two angels came to the house of Lord. And they came to bring judgment. It was at the eve of judgment. It was the day, the night before the judgment of fire and brimstone will be rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And then those men, the Sodomites, they came to the house of Lord and they said, Where are the men that came in here today? We want to know them. Not just know them and see them officially. They wanted to commit sodomy with them. And while they were doing that, Lord said, Don't do like this. This is wickedness. These are heavenly guests. These are not ordinary people from another town here on earth. They came from on high. And they said, don't, well, don't worry about that. We want to know them. And we're going to defile them. And so those angels smote them with blindness, physically. But then, small and great, even though they were blind, and the miracle of judgment came upon them right there. They were still searching for the door. And they wanted to break down the door. They wanted these people to get into defilement by all means. That's, that means now their minds have been blinded. Their hearts have been blinded. Look at verse 12. And the man said unto the Lord, those angels, as thou hear any besides? son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we shall destroy this place there was no kind of argument and there was no kind of doubt about it we shall destroy this place because their cry the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the lord and the Lord has sent us purposefully. And this is the one errand we have to destroy it. And Lot went out and he spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you, up, get you out of this place. But the Lord will destroy. Look at that. The Lord will destroy. And there is no doubt about this. This one is no suggestion. And this one is no supposition. The Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his son's in law. They were blind. They were blind. They were blind. They had never seen Lord see anything like this before. And yet their minds, their hearts were so blind. That they will not listen to Lord. Well, you know the story. Eventually, Lord came out, and the two daughters came out, and the wife also tried to come out. And as she looked back, she was blind too spiritually and became a pillar of salt. And Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by fire. Why? They were blind. The warning was there. Up, get you out. There's no time to waste. They were blind. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, reading from verse 8. Isaiah 59, verse 8. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. The people who do whatever they do, the people who say whatever they say, and there is no justice, there's no thoughtfulness. They just move on, they just talk, they just act, they just do whatever they do. They have made them crooked paths 
whosoever goes therein shall not know peace. Somebody does something now, he loses or she loses his peace or her peace. The following day she does the same thing again. Somebody does something now, and all peace and sexual mind is gone. There's condemnation, there's forgiveness, there's a confusion. The following week, he does the same thing. It says, there is a, therefore judgment is far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We wait for the light, but behold, obscurity for brightness. But we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. These were Israelites, and they were religious. And yet they said, we're looking for the light. The light is in the Word. The Word is the light. Your Word is a lamp unto my feet, unto my pathway. And yet we grope like they We grope for darkness. Uh, we grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble. At noonday, as in the night, we are in desolate places as dead men. Lamentation chapter 4. The condition of these people and their blindness, spiritual blindness, retarded them, drew them back. The place they could have got to, the lanes they could have reached, and the glory that could have come to them, the spiritual blindness of their mind, of their heart, hindered them. In Lamentation chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. Lamentation chapter 4, reading from verse 14. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They just wander about, roam about. There is no goal. There is no destiny. They are not asking themselves, why am I here? Why am I in the world? What am I created for? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going? How did yesterday go? How did last month go? How did last year pass away? How is this year going? They are thoughtless about their lives. And it says they have wandered as blind men in the streets. It says they are polluting themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, depart ye. It is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. When they, should, they fled away and wandered, they said, Among the heathen, they shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord has divided them. He will, he will no more regard them. They pray and God doesn't pay attention. They have their religious feats and God does not pay attention. And they have their religious fasting, and God does not regard them. They go on their Sabbath day to go and worship, and God doesn't regard them. Everything they did, God just uh, turned his eyes away. They respected not the person of the priest, even the priest that will try and show them. Look at the way. Look at salvation. Look at eternal life. Look at how to amend your ways. Look at how to repent. And look at how you will seek the Lord, and the Lord will have mercy on you. They respected not the person of the priest. They favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. I come into Romans, New Testament now, talking about the blindness of the people, the blindness of the religious, and um, the blindness of those who think they see, and yet they see nothing. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Because that when the new God, they glorified him not as God, 
the new God, they glorified him not as God. If you knew a great man, how will you respect and honor that great man? You put a difference between your action to the lowly and your action to the great man. And the new God as the creator of heaven and earth, as the possessor of heaven and earth, as the owner of all things, and yet they did glorify him as God, neither were they thankful. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish thoughts was darkened. But uh, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed bees, and to creeping things. They worship idols. And you'll be surprised as the word of God is very clear and very plain. You will not make any idol of anything that looks like man on earth, of the fish, of the bird in the sky. There are people that have gone to the highest of schools. And they have read other literature of Shakespeare and of other writers. And they understand them. And they even teach them. And yet they come to the Bible. They see the plain words of God. They remain in places of worship filled with idols. Idols outside the church building. Idols in the church building. The idol, the image of so and so. And the image of such and such. We're talking about people that might even be professors of English language and yet they cannot see that this is against the word of God. What's that? That's blindness. Go on in verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own, of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And there are millions and millions of people, whenever they want to do something, their question is, what if the policeman catches me? They fear the policeman more than they fear God. They never think, what if God challenges me on this? What if God will question me on this? Is the policeman they are afraid of? Other people, they will say, what if the government sees me doing this, hears me doing this? What will the government do? They think of government, they never think about God. Other people, they say, I'm doing, if my husband gets to know what will happen, they think of their husband, they never think about God. This way I'm going, I hope my wife does not hear this. I don't want my wife to know this. Even because, you know, my wife has hypertension. And if she hears what I'm doing with this other lady, the hypertension will shoot up and she might die, just collapse like that. They think of what their wives will say. They never think about what God will say. Other people, what if the pastor will hear this one? I hope the pastor will not see through this. He will not see that I am the one doing this. I am the one doing that. They fear their pastor more than they fear God. Look at verse 25. A spiritual blindness. A person that will not think about God. God sees me. God knows me. God will judge this. They are only thinking about man, about, about the creature who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. In verse 26, for this cause God gave them up to vile affections that for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, they burnt in their laws one toward another, men with men, homosexuality, 
and women with men, les uh, lesbianism, men with men walking that which is so seemly, and receiving to themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a depraved mind, a blind mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, the bitch, the siege, malignity, whisperers. And you think that such people never go to a place of worship. Yes, they do. They do. They do. And they are regular. And they are hearing everything the word of God is saying. But it never penetrates their heart. They seek darkness in their heart and the blindness of their mind. It says they are backbiters. Haters of God, they're spiteful, they're proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding. They're covenant breakers, they're without natural affection. Natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same but they have pleasure in them that do them. It's blindness, spiritual blindness. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that she henceforth, Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Vanity, darkness, deception of their mind. There are people that claim to be saved, born again. And if you talk to them, or they say, yes, I'm your brother, I'm your sister. I'm born again like you are born again. But you know what? They are still walking as other Gentiles walk. And they don't see anything wrong in that. They talk like other Gentiles unsaved. They fight like other Gentiles unsaved. They commit sin regularly, normally. It's their habitual life as other Gentiles do. And they walk in the vanity of their mind. They can curse. They can blaspheme. They can make jest of the word of God like all the Gentiles do. And when you talk to them, they say, oh, I'm born again, born again. Uh, if I had time, I'd even follow you to do evangelism. I just, I'm just like you are. But look at verse 18. Uh, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You're telling them this is not the way of a born again child of God. They cannot see. You're telling them, have you not read? Have you not seen? Are we not holding the same Bible? They cannot see. Because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling. They don't have any feelings anymore. Their consciences are dead. And they can hurt somebody. They can injure somebody. And they can trample on somebody. And they don't have any feeling. They just do it and laugh and go their way. And they claim to be children of God. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with greediness. I pray the Lord will keep our eyes open. We will not be blind. I will not remain blind. Point number two now, the danger and the damnation for religious blindness. Somebody is religiously blind. He knows that he's been in this religion 
And in this path of religion, and in this way of life, for years, and nothing has ever changed. And now you bring real salvation message to him or to her. And she's so blind, and he's so blind. He says, okay, I'll go and ask my priest. I'll go and ask my pastor. If what you are telling me is true, my pastor went to seminary. My pastor went to college. My pastor has a second degree in religion and theology. Comparative religion. My pastor knows everything. Okay, I'll go and ask him. And he goes to the pastor, the shepherd, the leader, the one that is to show the way to heaven. And said, I met somebody. And he has seen her. We must repent and must turn away from every sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we will be saved. And after we are saved, we will not continue in that sin anymore. Then he will say, bring that person to me and I will teach him no man in this world. You can go to the sky and come back. No man can live above sin. That's what they say. But thank God, our eyes are open. My eyes are open. The Lord will keep your eyes open in Jesus' name. Look at the danger and the damnation for religious blindness. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. I'm reading from verse 10. His watchmen are blind. Very clear. His pastors are blind. His priests are blind. The evangelists that they rely on, they're blind. They are all, without exception, ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that they cannot bag. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea. They're greedy dogs. He's talking about preachers. He's talking about pastors. He's talking about bishops. He's talking about watchmen. They're greedy dogs that can never have enough. They are shepherds, overseers, pastors that cannot understand. Without readiness, no man shall see the Lord. The preacher will ask you, why is that in the Bible? Okay, it's a quotation from John Wesley. No, not at all. It's from the Bible. Where is it? You open it, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, and then you read it to them. I cannot understand that. Because I've been taking the Holy Communion for years. And you know, I'm still myself. I'm a communicant. I am this, I am that. And they still do not understand that the blood of Jesus Christ washes us and cleanses us from all sin. That once we repent and turn away from our sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He forgives us, He saves us, He changes our lives. It says they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his son gain from his quarter. Look at verse 12. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine. Can you think of preachers who are drunk? Can you think of preachers who, they, who say the only problem they have is alcohol? But then they turn around and they say, Anyway, it's my flesh that drinks, my spirit is saved. It is my mouth that drinks, but my spirit and my heart, I am saved. And there are people who claim that they are Christians. There are people who claim that they are children of God. Alcohol is their problem. Or it may be tobacco is their problem. And they say, you know, it is this my flesh. You know, it is this uh, habit. And I know I'm born again. I know I'm, I'm saved. Only that my flesh is my trouble. 
No, you are not born again. If any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Let somebody say amen there. Somebody says he's born again. Somebody says he's a child of God. And fornication will not leave him, or he will not leave fornication. Somebody says, I'm born again. Somebody says, I'm a religious man. I'm even a preacher. Adultery will not leave him, will not leave her. Somebody says, I know the way of the Lord. I'm going the way of the Lord. And wine and alcohol and tobacco will not leave them. It says, We will feel ourselves a strong drink. And today shall be, and tomorrow shall be, and this day much more abundant. That's the blindness. I pray the Lord will deliver everyone from such spiritual blindness in Jesus' name. If somebody is blind spiritually and is just going on and on in a spiritual blindness, if he dies in that condition, it will go to where blind people go. The people who do not know the way of salvation. And let's look at, um, at uh, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And see what Jesus said to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees, to the hypocrites. There are many hypocritical people in religion. And they say to others, don't do this, and they themselves, they do that in the secret. They have no power to overcome what they are challenging other people and telling other people they should not do. They are hypocritical in their preaching hypocritical in their religion, hypocritical in their worship. Matthew chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 16. Look at verse 16 here. It says, Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Look at verse 17. Ye fools and blind. Ye fools and blind. Look at verse 19. Ye fools and blind. The Lord Jesus Christ was talking to the religious leaders of the land and was telling them, You are blind, you are blind, you are blind. Come to verse 24. Ye blind guides, which, uh, which strain at a knot and swallow a camel. And then it goes on to say in verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and, Pharise scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess, the blind Pharisee. Christ falls that which is within the cup and the platter, and that the outside of them may be clean. Actually, what Jesus is saying is applicable to everyone that gives an outward expression of righteousness. I don't wear jewelry. I don't uh, put on lipsticks, and I don't uh, wear ring, and I don't have this and that. I don't have worldliness, but the heart is full of extortion. The heart is full of deception. The heart is full of darkness. The heart is full of immorality. The heart is full of corruption. That's what Jesus is saying. He said those people that are outwardly clean, but inwardly unclean, they are blind. In verse 28, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within a full of hypocrisy and iniquity. If iniquity is on the inside, but the outward is like, I'm one of you, don't you see me? Look at my appearance and look at this and look at that. It says, such people are blind. What's the danger of that? Look at verse 15. In verse 15 of that same Matthew chapter 23, want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. They do evangelism, they go to other people, they reach out to other people. It's like, I'm all right, 
are you not going to be like me? It's like, I'm in the way. Why did you come in the way with me? It says the compass, sea, and land to make one convert, one disciple, one proselyte. And when he is made, he make him to fold child of hell than yourselves. Those people, they convert, and those people, they bring in into their church into our church, into their synagogue, into our sanctuary. Those people, they rely on outward things. Madam, can you see, sister, can you see my mother in the Lord? Can you see I don't wear this again? I don't uh, paint this again. And madam, mother in the Lord say, you're all right, you're all right. And their hearts are not changed. And they are not converted. And they are not born again. And they are deceived to go on in their sin. In their depravity. They become to full child of hell. Sir, pastor, brother, I don't smoke anymore. Sir, pastor, I don't do this anymore. And then I attend our deeper line Bible church now. Every time. Although the anger is still there. The fighting is still there. The violence is still there. The covetous is still there. The fornication is still there. You are coming to our church and you are regular now. Wonderful. That's good. You are on the way. No, it's not in the way. The heart must be born again. The life must be totally transformed. If you encourage them like that, they become two false children of God, children of hell, than yourself. Look at verse 33. Verse 33, ye serpents and ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? How can you escape the damnation of hell? It comes, at, we look at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 19. Romans chapter 2, verse 19. The danger of that spiritual blindness and the damnation in that spiritual blindness. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, it says, And art confident that thou art thyself a guide of the blind. They are confident that they are guided the blind. And if any of their church members will say, I want to go to this gospel church, I want to go to this Bible-believing church, they say, why? Those pastors in those, what you call, Bible-believing churches, have they gone to college? Have they gone to seminary? We have gone to college, we have gone to seminary, we know the Greek, we know the Hebrew, we know the history, and we know all the commentaries. We are the guides of the blind, I about their lives. How about their conduct? How about their behavior? How about their understanding? How about their worship? The worship of God. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind and a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth of the law. Thou therefore that teachest another, teachest thou not thyself, thou that preachest a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? You preach a man should not steal. You know a man should not steal. Do you steal? Do you steal from your husband? Do you steal from your wife? Do you steal from your school? Do you steal from your college? Do you steal from the offering in the church? Born again, sanctified, feel what the Holy Ghost. Are you still a thief? Are you still a robber? In verse 22, thou that seest a man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? A man should not commit adultery. I give testimony, I'm born again, I give testimony, I'm a child of God. What are you doing with your mate? What are you doing with those school girls that come to feel this form and that form or that you didn't lesson for? What do you do with them? That that says a man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law. 
through the breaking of the law, dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Uh, we watch uh, some people, we're Christians, we're Christians, we're born again, we're born again, we're higher, we're deeper, and we're children of God, saved and sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait until, you know, somebody dies in their family, and they're going to do the burial, and see all the things they do, that the unbelievers that come there will say, ah, ah, this is deeper life, a burial. I thought they said that deeper life is a Bible church. Even those of us that, uh, you know, go to churches, they say are not deeper, we're superficial, we are, you know, we're nominal. We don't go as far as this. Wait until their children are getting married and wait for their reception and see the things happening there. And then people begin to say, what? I never knew that this is, you know, the, I just say about them, they're holy, holy, and they're righteous, and they don't touch unclean things, and they're not like the world. They separate themselves from the world. What? So this is how they do their marriage. The name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. That's the blindness. That's the blindness. And the Lord wants us to come out of that blindness. We will not remain in blindness in Jesus' name. I will not be in blindness. I will not be blind. Let's know where you stand. If you stand among the people that can see, take your stand. If you want to be among those who are blind, let us know where you are. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I lost my people there. You will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. And we're coming to Romans, Romans chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 7. Romans chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 7. What then? Israel has not obtained that which is seeketh from, and that uh, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. A minority of them, some of them got saved on the day of Pentecost, some of them got saved in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, and some of them got saved as the apostles witnessed unto them, but the rest were blinded. They were blinded to salvation. They were blinded to the name of Jesus, the only name that saves. Look at verse 20. In verse 25, for I would not have you, brethren, I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, that lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. A nation that, uh, you know, all the writers of uh, the, all the authors of the books of the Old Testament, Israelites, coming from Moses unto Joshua, unto the judges, unto the Psalms, unto Malachi, they were all Israelites. And yet, although the authors of those books of the Bible were Israelites, blindness is come unto Israel. All the apostles that wrote from Matthew to Malachi, to Luke and John and Acts of the Apostles and Romans unto, Rebel unto Revelation. They are all Israelites. And yet, even though God used their people, their nationals, to give us the whole Bible, it says the blindness has come unto them, unto the fullness of the Gentiles become in. I pray we will not remain blind. I said we will not remain blind. What's the danger? If somebody is blind, let me show you an example or two in Exodus. Exodus, I'm reading from verse chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Look at it here from verse 5. Exodus chapter 14 verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of the and, and of his servants was turned against the people and they said why have we done this that we have let israel go from serving us 
that spiritual blindness Moses came let my people go we're going to worship God who oh, is that God I don't know that God he threw the rod down and the rod became a serpent the magicians threw their rods down they became serpents and the serpent of Moses and Aaron swallowed up all those serpents and the man still will not see and then the, the river all the water in the land turned to blood and the man will not see and frogs covered the whole land and the man will not see and lies upon every animal and upon every man and the man will not see and hails of fire heavy stones like bags of cement fell upon animals and people and the man will not see eventually the firstborn of every family died and when he looked at the children of Israel, all their children were spared. And now he said, I see, I see, I know God is talking. Go, leave the land and pray for me also. And they left. All those children of Israel left. Now the children of Israel were before the Red Sea. And so Pharaoh said, what came on us? Why did we leave those people? Why did we release them? That's blindness. And he took chariots and all the chariots of the land and himself. He said, I will, we are going to catch those people. Those people, we are going to bring them back. Pharaoh, have you forgotten what happened just a few nights ago? That all the firstborn in the land all died? I don't care. I'm going to pursue them. I'll bring them back. When people have seen miracle upon miracle, miracle of judgment, miracle of mercy, and yet they want to pursue evil, that's blindness. Look at verse 6, and he made, re and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he stood and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them and it says the lord had in the heart of pharaoh that he says he wanted his heart to be hardened and he wanted to pursue he said okay you want to go your way you can go and then it says and he pursued after the children of israel and the children of israel went out with a high hand look at verse 19 in verse 19 you know what happened when moses called upon the lord the lord says stretch your rod and the sea will part for you and the children of israel pass through the sea instead of saying they have gone i cannot catch them again i cannot reach them again he said you pass through the sea we will too we have chariots and we have the mind and we have the correct as a blind man a person that will see danger like this and will see the red sea parted and will see the way and go into that red sea and at the end of it will be death and hell that's blindness i pray you'll not be blind whatever it is in your heart you want to pursue you want to pursue look at danger you still pursue look at hell you still pursue look at judgment you still pursue look at the devastation that already came upon the land of egypt and you still pursue that's blindness i pray you'll not be blind i will not be blind verse 19 and the angel of god which went before the camp of israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these that is to the children of israel Israel, so that the one came not near the other all the night and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back 
by strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all the chariots of Pharaoh and the, all Pharaoh's sources and chariots and horsemen look at that, that's blindness that's blindness already he saw that the angel of God came in between them and there was darkness and the children of Israel could have light and all the Egyptians had darkness he said don't worry we will get them don't worry even if god is fighting we're going to conquer that's blindness i pray you'll not be blind that somebody is pursuing death is pursuing hell is pursuing perishing and yet you will not give up what other blindness are you looking for in verse 24 and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee, it's too late. There's a point somebody gets to, a point of no return. After God has won them, after God has brought judgments, after God has spoken to them, after God has sent his servants, and he said, this way of rejecting the word of the Lord will not work. And they still pursued. Now they reach the point of no return. Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea and the waters, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the seed returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them and there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians tell me dead upon the sea it's one thing to die it's another thing to face what happens after death which is judgment hell fire I pray that will not happen to us I say that will not happen to you but as you see the hand of God, as you see the judgment of God, at the time you have to repent, repent and turn so that iniquity will not be your ruin in Jesus' name. Point number one, the descriptions and the decrees, the degrees of returning blindness. Number two, the danger and damnation for religious blindness. Number three now, our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. Our decision for deliverance from reversible blindness. If the blindness is going to be reversed, we have to make up our minds. And it is not a temporary reversal. It's a permanent reversal. Lord, I know that's the way of the blind. 
That's the way of darkness, and that's the way that leads to eternal darkness, and I will not walk therein anymore. The Lord will answer your prayer. Look at Psalm 146, Psalm 146, and we're reading from verse 8. Psalm 146, we're reading from verse 8. It says, The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The one who turns from unrighteousness to righteousness. The one who turns from sin to the Savior. The one who turns from darkness unto light. And the one who turns from gentle abomination to gospel, uh, to gospel message. That's the one. And the Lord has the power to open on their eyes Psalm 119 Psalm 119 I'm reading from verse 8 Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law I know the word of salvation is there Open thou mine eyes that I may behold your wonderful salvation I know the word for worship is there Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wonders of worship I know your power is there in the word open them mine eyes that i may behold the wonders of your power i know eternal life is there such as scriptures for in them you think you have everlasting life open them mine eyes that i may behold the wonders of everlasting life in your word and when god opens our eyes we'll walk in the way of righteousness we're looking at isaiah chapter 35 Isaiah chapter 35 and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35 from verse 4. Say to them that of a fearful heart be strong. Fear not. Behold your God will come with a vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. And then it says in verse 5, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. You see that? It will come and save you. It will come and transform you. It will come and change your heart and change your mind and change your nature. Because it's the God who opens the eyes of the blind. And the ears of the dead shall be unstopped. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and an highway shall be there. A way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, do fools, do uneducated, do ignorant, shall not err, shall not go astray therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Amen. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 4. When the Lord came, this is what he announced to the people. The word of God that came to him, that was given unto him, and in the rage, the thing that had been written concerning him, he opens the minds of people, he opens the hearts of people, he opens the eyes of people, he opens the intelligence of people, he opens the way before people. He's the Messiah, he is the Christ, and it's the one that God has given to make the way open before us. And as we come to him, and we're not relying upon ourselves, and we come to him and depend depend upon him and call upon him, he'll open our eyes, he'll open our minds, he'll open everything within us and the fountain of the grace of God will flow and we will see clearly and the grace of God will be ours in Jesus' name. 
Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the good news to the poor, the way of salvation, the word of salvation to the poor, the people that know they cannot pay for salvation, they don't have any money, they don't have resources to pay for salvation, but Christ paid it all. And he opens their understanding and their faith in God that through him and through him alone we can have a faith that gives us salvation. He gives that goodness to us. And then he says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to those who are blind. They are blind physically, recovering of sight to them. They are blind spiritually, the recovering of sight to them. They are blind religiously, the giving of sight unto them. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears i pray to be fulfilled in your life darkness will vanish away ignorance will vanish away and religious darkness religious blindness will vanish away from every one of us in jesus name he opens our eyes then we're able to see and we know this is the way there's no other way and this is the truth there's no other truth and this is the only means by which we can get to heaven there's no other way there's no other means and then we hold on to that we embrace that we believe that a change comes in our lives and that change that comes in our lives make, makes us now to see every day the path we should walk in and the way we should walk in and the word we should hold on to and the grace we should possess and the power we should possess so that we will have the strength we'll have the courage we'll have the backbone we'll have the uncompromising nature to walk in that way that leads to heaven and that heaven where we'll get there in jesus name we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts of the apostles chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 16 acts chapter 26 reading from verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of those things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send you they will deliver us i said they will deliver us you know preachers too can be blind you know soul winners too can be blind you know walkers too can be blind when god has said i will deliver you from the people from the gentiles to whom i now send you and then you're afraid to go out you're afraid to evangelize you're afraid to move in the street because you know i don't know what you do are you still blind can't you see what the lord has promised he has raised you up for a purpose and he has raised you up for a goal and he says this is the commission he has put it in your hand everywhere you go preaching the gospel he will deliver you no harm will come upon you no hurt will come upon you if you don't take that, if you don't act on that, if you don't build on that, if you don't rise up and go and do what the Lord said, it means you are partially blind in that way. Every form of blindness, the Lord will take away from us in Jesus' name. Now, if Paul remained blind, how would he be able to open the eyes of the blind? If you remain blind, how can you open the eyes of the blind? Look at the purpose for which he was raised up and look at the purpose for which you are raised up. Look at verse 18. Verse 18, tell me what you find in first line there. Tell me out aloud. If you know that is your ministry, that is your calling, that is your, that is your work, tell me aloud. 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. The power of Satan will never overcome you will never come upon your life that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified 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 by faith that is in me we're coming to second peter chapter one second peter chapter one thank god our eyes are open our minds are open our hearts are open and the way is open before us in Jesus name second Peter chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 3 second Peter chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 3 it says in verse 3 according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He has given us already all things that pertain to life, all things that pertain to godliness. We have eternal life and we have godliness and we can live a godly life in the most uh, dead in the dirtiest place on earth we can live a virtuous and a righteous and a godly life in jesus name whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws look at this and beside this give it all diligence they start to keep your eyes open they start to keep the eyes of your mind and the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your mind open to remain open and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue and to your uh, and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance uh, uh, patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren if those things remain in you and your eyes remain open then you are not going to be barren and it says no fruit in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ look at verse 9 but but he that lacketh these things no faith no virtue no knowledge no holiness no righteousness no diligence in pursuing christian character he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a pharaoh and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins if we are going to remain sharp-sighted it means that all the sins that we have confessed and forsaken none of them will come back depravity will not come back defilement will not come back sinfulness will not come back and we're not going to remain lukewarm. We'll remain zealous for the Lord in Jesus' name. I lost your amen there. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 17. Revelation chapter 3. We're reading from verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. The people who say, what am I praying for? I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm deeper. I'm the personification of deeper life itself. And I have everything. I don't need any other thing. I've had all the messages I need to hear. I prayed all the prayers I need to pray. I have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked how do we overcome that kind of blindness spiritual religious blindness it says i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich 
and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes salves, that thou mayest see, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasing. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him. Light will come into him. And power will come into him. And the grace to open his, the eyes of his mind, of his heart, everything will come into him. I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to each with me in my throne. And even as I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father, in his throne, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. We have ears to hear, it will open our eyes in Jesus' name. When he opens our eyes, he opens the scriptures unto us. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and we're reading from verse... 27. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse, let's read from verse 25. In Luke chapter 24, verse 25, Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then he tells us in verse 45, then opened he their understanding. It will open your understanding. Anywhere you go in the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, in the Gospels, in the Epistles, anywhere, it will open your understanding. And it will open the Scriptures unto you, and what has provided for you through His death on the cross of Calvary, you will have, you will possess in Jesus' name. Then open He the understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. I pray today, a greater understanding will come to you. A higher understanding will come to you and everywhere you read in the scriptures it will be so open to you you will see what christ is who christ is and what christ can do in your life through those scriptures in jesus name we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 17 acts of the apostles chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 2 acts 17 Verse 2, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days received with them out of the scriptures. Look at this opening and alleging, opening and alleging, opening and confirming that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. As their eyes were opened, some of them believed and consulted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. That's what happens when our eyes are open, when our hearts are opened. When our minds are open, when the veil is taken away, everything the Lord has provided at Calvary then becomes ours. Salvation becomes easy. Sanctification becomes easy. Holy Ghost baptism becomes easy. The grace, sufficient grace to live the Christian life, a victorious life, becomes available. And then the Christian life becomes something that you enjoy. And the Christian work and the Christian ministry becomes something you know, that you enjoy. I pray that opening of the eyes will be more and more, even today, tonight, in Jesus' name. 
He'll touch your heart. He'll touch your mind. He'll touch your life. And spiritually, it will open every closed door and every darkness, every form of darkness will vanish away and light from heaven will shine forth into your heart and into the scriptures for you in Jesus' name. And you can get more from the Lord tonight as your eyes are open. Let's rise up now and tell the Lord, Lord, I need more, Lord, I need more. You've opened the scriptures to me. I don't want to remain blind. I don't want to remain clouded. I don't want to remain in darkness. Open my eyes, Lord, as I call upon you now and let me know what I have in the Lord, what belongs to me. Open your mouth and open your heart and open everything within you unto the Lord. is about to do something greater, more than you ever saw in your life.